This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. We're going to join uh, Scott Wilson in downtown Los Angeles right now. We're going to talk about a number of things. He is the uh, the CEO of Ustrive Manufacturing. They have been producing apparel knitwear for years. And overnight, they switched to become a medical device company. Scott, thanks for uh, spending some time with us here at Late Night Health. My pleasure. What, let, let's talk about the apparel industry. Um, the fact that you're producing uh, your products here in the U.S., yay, that's a good thing. Uh, because a lot, of, uh, a lot of our clothing is not. I, I think this is, this is a beautiful shirt. I bought it at a major place. Um, but I, I'm almost convinced it was made overseas someplace. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, if we can employ Americans, I think that's better. Um, I agree with you. And yes, that shirt being the type of shirt it was, I can almost promise you it wasn't made here in the U.S. Um, Got it. But uh, um, yeah, we, we've we been a domestic manufacturer for 30 years. We're, we're, there are a few of us out there. And um, uh, we've created some niche in the markets that, is why we're able to sustain ourselves against uh, the import world. And, uh, and a lot of that is due to quick turn, our, our organic status that other companies and around the world do not have. So for us to compete domestically, we have to do things either better or different. Um, and that's kind of how we competed in, the, in this market. Um, for the last 30 years. How did you get into the, the clothing business in the first place? Um, I blame my mother on this one. Because, uh, <laughs> we all blame um, our mother for everything. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. But I, I, I really blame her on this one because the um, she used to sew our clothes. And uh, she liked to sew. And as a baby... Um, and growing up, she sewed, and I was in the crib, and then as that, as I got older, she'd take it to the fabric mills. I grew up in Massachusetts, and back east, back then, they still had the big old mills there in, in Chicopee Falls at Springfield, and my brothers and sisters could care less about that. I was enthralled with that business, even as a little kid, so... Um, and then after I was out of um, uh, school, I got into repping for the ski industry business and ski clothing. And that led me into retail stores and then into manufacturing. So everything has always been related to, uh, my whole working career has been related to clothing in some form or another. My, my father was a, a window dresser uh, for women's clothing. And, um, even though he left that years, years and years ago, he, uh, he loved to go into downtown LA and shop for my sisters, my wife, my mom. And occasionally he would go to a men's clothing store and pick up a deal for himself and me. So I love clothing. I'm, it's tactile. I, uh, the clothing to me is, is, is a tactile thing. I've got to touch it before I buy it. If I buy something online, it inevitably goes back. And uh, especially there's, there's if it's polyester. Something about that. Yeah, the, the touch and feel, you know, it's the fabrics, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. Every fabric has a unique hand to it. And I'm like you, I, I grew up, you know, I'm older school, so I, Touch and feel is, is quite important, but you're right. The online business, that's why there's a large return uh, ratio in online business because of that. Right. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about COVID-19 happens uh, sometime in late October, November. We start hearing about, you know, what it amounts to a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus, uh, it starts sweeping, 
country after country, hits the United States. What motivated you to switch from uh, doing knitwear to uh, medical devices? I was motivated by a phone call. Ah. I, I, I was motivated by a phone call from Kaiser Permanente on a Saturday morning saying, you're going to be in the mask business. And that's what motivated me. Prior to that, I'm sitting on my couch. We closed the week before. Um, it was during that time when the businesses had to close down. We had been shut for about a week. And we're all, me and my partners are wondering, what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to survive? You know, how long is this going to be? Um, the clothing business, as you, as you may or may not know, is, is not generally a, for the manufacturing side of, uh, is a, a cash, uh, cash cow business. We're always, uh, kind of on the, the cash poor side of the business. Uh, so, um, being on the manufacturing. So, uh, downtime for us was, is, is, was going to possibly be detrimental. And, and we were talking about maybe not even surviving. And uh, so a week at home, and I got a call actually on a Saturday morning at about 8.30 in the morning from a the vice president of Kaiser and said we were recommended, uh, you were recommended uh, by um, the, Cal uh, the California uh, Fashion Association recommended you as someone that can make masks for us. And that changed everything, that phone call. <laughs> I, would, I would imagine. Uh, in, in the, we in literally, the Mark, what happened was, is, um, she's, she's, first, I don't know who this person is. And, <laughs> and, and she says, you know, I work for Kaiser, um, and I, and I don't know if she's a regional vice president or a director or whatever, but she says, uh, we're going to be at your factory at about two o'clock this afternoon. And I said, well, it's Saturday for one thing. She says, yeah, we're going to be at your factory at two o'clock this afternoon and you better be open because you're going to be getting fabric. I mean, it was that quick. Wow. And so I, I drive, I'm at home. I call up everyone. I said, we're going to, we're going to go to work. And, uh, so we, we drove into the factory and she, and her name's, uh, Jody Leash. And she, she shows up and she introduces herself and she's, I'm the vice president of Kaiser. And I said, Vice President of Regional, and she goes, "No, I'm the Vice President." Whoa! <laughs> and she says, "My boss is coming to your facility, and we're bringing auditors, and they will be here around four o'clock." And I said, "Who's your boss?" I said, "There's not a lot of people probably above you." And she says, "The CEO of Kaiser is coming to your facility at four o'clock today. His name is Gregory Adams." So I went from sitting on the couch at eight in the morning to standing next to the CEO of Kaiser in our facility, getting fabric at four o'clock that afternoon. We have, from that moment on to today, we've produced over a million and a half masks for That's Kaiser. True. And we've produced over a half a million isolation gowns for Kaiser in that short a period of time. Let, let's talk about some psychology, if, if I may. COVID-19 happens. Clothing manufacturer is not considered an essential business. You're asked to close down. You've had employees, I would imagine, some of them for years. And you have to say, guys, I've got to put you on furlough. I've got to, we're not going to wor work. What went through your mind when you did that? That's, that's got to be the hardest thing I can think of. Um, you're, 
we had just received um, our a GOT certification a couple months earlier, which took us a year and a half to achieve. We're the only factory in North America, and one one of few in the world that achieved the status. We were flying high. We were we were getting press. Uh, the big brands were all coming to us. Uh, organic and sustainability is the new buzz. We were flying high. And this occurred in, in literally, like I was saying earlier, in about a week, we were wondering from flying high to, are we in business? Wow. The and the certification, tell us what the certification stands for. That that was uh, a GOT certificate. GOTS and OCS certification. GOTS is Global Organic Textile Standard, and OCS is Organic Standard, um, Organic Content Standard. Those certifications are are uh, to track our process, organic process uh, on our manufacturing. It took us a year and a half to achieve um, it. Uh, it's, it requires social, uh, the, it's a social compliance as well as process compliance. It's, it's, it's very difficult to achieve. Basically, you make everything uh, with no chemicals, no plastic touches our products, nothing. So it was, we had to basically reinvent our manufacturing process to achieve this. Um, so nothing like I, what I have in my shirt, which is polyester at all. No, uh, I'm wearing a shirt right now that is dyed with salt, vinegar, and baking soda, and it's and it's made with um, organic hemp and organic uh, cotton. This shirt I'm wearing, you can basically eat it, and it wouldn't hurt you. Oh my! And you can wear it, and it's certainly not going to hurt you wearing it. The shirt right. you're wearing, Mark, unfortunately, is loaded with formaldehydes, PVCs, yep. and a lot of other nasty ingredients that. I could spend a lot of time just talking about those. Right. That those, and your shirt is probably soft and comfortable too. At the same time, wearable. Uh, extremely. And I don't want to be too biased here, but this is probably the finest T-shirt you, there is in the market. You know? Got it. Well, I'm, and, I'm uh, looking forward to get uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 buying one, and I love that color. Let's let let's talk about. You know, when you and your partners thought you were going out of business, yeah. that you had to close down, the the psychological impact of this pandemic had to have weighed on you guys. Um, it, it weighed on me more on the employees, actually. Because you had mentioned earlier, you have employees for a long time. We've had employees for generations. We've had grandmothers, mothers, daughters, uh, fathers, sons. So we, we're all family here. It, it's not just um, employees as numbers. They're, they're, they're not just names. These are, these are generations that have worked with us. Um, in our industry, we're, it's, it's week to week. They're paid every Friday. Um, we're paid higher than, than most any factory in Los Angeles, if not the most in Los Angeles, that's part of the requirements under our, our certifications. We have to adhere to a higher social compliance. But that said, the workers are, are basically um, week to week as far as uh, of how they live. So um, I can last a month or two, maybe they can't. Right. They, they have a lot of mouths to feed. Uh, um, it, it, it's, I was more concerned about their, their well being, And also in, from a business standpoint, when it opens up, um, are, are they going to be available again? Because they have to find some form of way to work and, 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 and feed themselves. They may not be available in the time frame. you know, if this lasted a month or two or three to even be back, and these are extremely skilled workers that we have, um, a higher level of worker. So there is a lot of things going through uh, my mind and my partner's mind that uh, 
you know, we don't, we didn't know what was going to happen. So sure. you're, you're absolutely right. It was, it was, it was a lot of sweat and agony going on. I'll bet. Uh, our guest, uh, in case you're just joining us, is Scott Wilson, the CEO of Ustrive Manufacturing in downtown LA. Just about overnight, they went from m- making knitwear and high quality knitwear, like Scott just uh, uh, described in his t shirt, to uh, creating and manufacturing medical masks. We're going to talk about the difference of medical masks now. Um, so now you, you have this order from Kaiser. You've done an incredible amount, a million plus masks already. Uh, you, I'm assuming you've brought all of your workers back and they went, yay. Um, and you're making these masks. Uh, you, you can go to some supermarkets, you can go to some stores right now, and they'll hand you a mask if you forget yours. What's the difference between your mask, the ones that you're doing for Kaiser, and the ones that are being manufactured and and given out at, at supermarkets? Well, I, I hope not a whole lot, actually. But um, unfortunately, I don't think that's the case. Uh, the mask we make for Kaiser has to uh, meet Kaiser and FDA guidelines because this mask is used for clinical use. So it's a liability. This is, you know, this mask is is, is a liability. It's in as far as Kaiser is concerned. So when they they when they came to us on that Saturday, they also brought their auditor and their doctors because we had to reconfigure an an entire manufacturing operation, uh, creating the social distance in our machinery for one thing. Um, Our machines are generally run three feet apart because it's an assembly line. Well, now they're six feet apart plus. So our our production level decreased per space by by half. So, and, And so that's one thing we had to deal with. Then we're dealing with under our GOTS programs, we we adhere to standards that no one else has, but then we're dealing with FDA standards, which we weren't comfortable, we weren't uh, familiar with. Sure. Fortunately for us, all that training in the year and a half prior of auditing, training, and all that basically set us up for this. Um, we were able to make adjustments because we're used to this high level uh, very quickly. And we, one, we had no choice, but we had we were able to change quickly. Um, you brought you brought up the mention of the sewers. Uh, we we had um, when we when we closed down, we had about sixty sewers um, when we shut down our operation. We now have over 350 sewers. 350 people working on sewing yes. machines? It increased that much. Wow. That's incredible. So when you say our employees are happy, there's a lot of happy employees. I think that's because terrific. We've, brought, we've, we've increased our business dramatically. We're now looking at moving to triple our size and our square footage of our operation in the next two months. This has been a a game changer for us, but we've also created some products that warrant those changes as well. But um, yeah, this is, this has been, uh, this has been. When, when we were told to wear masks at first, we were told that the masks were used are to be used to protect others. Okay. In other words, if, I were sick and I'm wearing a mask. The mask would protect others. Um, and now some masks are saying not only will it protect others, but it will protect you, the wearer of the mask, because the particles that are floating around in the air from somebody who may be ill can't. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm only. I'm only as educated as what I've been told by the FDA and Kaiser. Sure. And, and, and I've 
we're on conference calls with Kaiser on a daily basis. So um, I, I've learned a lot about this, obviously, uh, sure. uh, from, from them. And to, to answer your question, um, Kaiser, again, we have to hear it to a higher standard. This mask has to be made to an FDA standard. The mask, the general purpose mask, um, it's, it's the particle size that, that is, is the issue. Uh, the, uh, that the water vapor in, or the, the spray that's coming out of your mask is the size is the issue. So the outer lining of the mask to meet FDA standards has to be a twill type lining, which is basically your dress shirt material that you're wearing right now. It's a, a poplin or a, 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 um, a sheeting type material. It has to have a uh, 160 stitch inch per inch. And what that represents is it had, that creates a smaller stitch area so the, the water vapor can't penetrate that. The back lining or the inner lining is a, is a t-shirt lining. It's, it's more for comfort. And, and, um, and wearability, that particular lining. So those two combination is, is was required by the FDA uh, to, to be made into this mask. What the problem I see is, I see a lot of masks in the industry are made out of two-ply jerseys. Well, that's right. not gonna work. It, it, it's better than nothing, but it, it's not meeting a standard. So when you said earlier, getting masks from other people, I, I see so much product out there that's not even close to an FDA standard as far as the construction of a mask. I'm not even talking about how they're made. Right. You know, I don't even know if they're even, our masks, our employees are scanned twice a day. When they walk into the, when they come in the factory, we scan their foreheads. And if they're hundred degrees or above, they can't work. We scan them after lunch for the same thing. They wash their hands four times a day. They have to wear masks. They have to wear gloves. We have to adhere to these standards. We, we're audited. Now, I don't know if other factories are following those standards as they're making this mask. We sterilize the mask. So when the masks go out, it's clean. It's sterilized. You can put this mask on right away. How do you I'm sterilize sure. it? Through washing. Okay. We own a dye house, and our dye house is normally used to color the clothes, but now it's used to sterilize the mask. <laughs> so, that's, that's amazing. Um, so, why, don't you, um, why don't you demonstrate the mask, uh, if you could, show sure. it to us? Because I also We've noticed got, that it was a fashion statement as well. Yeah, this, this particular mask here, we, we make them in a lot of different colors because Kaiser didn't really care about the color as much as they cared about the function. And when you're making a million of something, you can't necessarily find that much fabric in that particular color. Right. Um, so the colors can vary quite a bit, but this particular one is, is a gray mask. And I'll show it to you here. It's a, there's the cotton twill or poplin outer. And then right. here is the Jersey inner and this binding around it is a cotton spandex that keeps it tight against the face. The elastic, this is something that's important. The elastic is a non-latex elastic. That is a requirement by the FDA because that way it's, it's hypoallergenic. And because a lot of people apparently are allergic to latex. Right. The, VP of Kaiser is allergic to latex and she was getting masks from other manufacturers and they were, her ears were breaking out. Oh. And so, so yeah, she said, she, she emailed me and said, Scott, yours don't break out. And so this is again, adhering to the standard, not taking shortcuts. This elastic costs 30 cents. The other elastic costs nine cents, but we're not going to take that risk. Right. So, these masks are, are what Kaiser uses as a general purpose mask. We have this mask here is a made out of a medical material that is used for clinical use. This is, can be used for surgeries and for 
operation and stuff like that. So we make two masks for Kaiser. And this mask here, they provide the material and we manufacture and construct to their guidelines. The cloth mask, we provide the whole component for them. Got it. This the mask, cloth, we can sell. I'm sorry, go ahead. Say that? I was going to ask. This is the cloth one. That's the cloth one. And that would be one if I were visiting somebody in the hospital at Kaiser or going into this Kaiser what, for whatever reason, they would hand this me was, a mask. This would be what you would be wearing. This is what you would wear. This is what the administrative people would are wearing. And uh, and then when you would get into the clinical section of the hospital, you would they would be wearing this mask. Got it. So we make the two masks for Kaiser, and we also make isolation gowns, a level three isolation gown, which is used for um, clinical use as well. Got it. And, and um, so the that again are the uh, is the mask. Um, I normally when I'm in the uh, in I'm in my office right now with the door closed, so I don't have it on. But when I leave my office, this mask has to be on. And yeah. when you come to our facility, you must wear a mask, you must wear gloves, and you can't take your cell phone out of your pocket or you must put it in the bag because that's the contamination. Wow. So again, these are the guidelines we adhere to. I hope other manufacturers of masks adhere to the same guidelines as well. Uh, last question, are these washable? Or yes. are they and disposable? The, 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 the surgical mask uh, made out of the Medline fabric is a one-use mask. Right. And it's good for four to six hours. Like the N95 mask, it's only good for four to six hours, actually about four hours. After that, they break down. This mask here, I've been wearing this mask for a month. I wash it and I rotate them every night um, because you're supposed to machine wash these. So this mask has been washed probably 20 times, maybe more. And it, and they get softer, it's just like your favorite shirt. They get softer and and more comfy as you more you wear them. Are those, are, um, is, is, so, the, is, is the material organic that you're still you are you still using organic material? No, no, we're not capable of getting some of the organic materials like the twill right now is hard to get. So the what we do is we dye it organically. And so that's the best I can do at this point is give you a mask that is dyed with salt, vinegar, baking soda, and organic dyes as compared to the shirt you're wearing and the mask that other people are wearing, you're wearing formaldehyde. You're breathing formaldehyde. That's the main ingredient in most uh, dyeing processes for fabric. Um, wearing it's one thing. Now you're breathing it constantly in and out every day. I don't think that's a, probably uh, good. We, I don't either. And uh, I have to look at what this shirt is made of. And it's hard, harder and harder to find all cotton shirts. You know, I prefer yes, that. Is. And that's going back to that tactile feeling that we, we talked about earlier. All right, here's the most important question that I've asked. I'm setting you up, Scott. Can you work a sewing machine? Okay. Can you no. work a sewing machine? I... You don't want to see the shirt I make. Got I, it. I butcher, I'm butcher things on a sewing machine. I don't sew things on sewing machines. Got it. Um, I've got, I've got 350 people that are much, much better at it than me. Scott, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for everything that you're doing for, for us to, to keep us healthy. And when you go back to manufacturing shirts and back to the organic stuff will get me out of this stupid thing. And um, though I do like the color and um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about organic uh, uh, clothing because we talk about organic food. We talk about non GMO food. We talk about uh, eating clean. Maybe we should be dressing clean as well. Right. It, it's not only what you're wearing on your body, but it's the environment, the the dyes and the way things are dyed are are 
not environmentally sound. So there's, it's the, it's the body as well as the, the planet that we're dealing with on the, when we talk about organic. So um, I'd love to uh, uh, have that discussion with you uh, whenever you're available. I've, I've sized you up now, looks like you're a size large. I think I got you covered. On a shirt, so um, we'll we'll on that we'll get you a, an organic shirt to wear um, for our next conversation. I I look forward to that. Thank you very much, Scott Wilson, uh, the uh, CEO of Ustrive here on Late Night Health, and uh, I guess you can go to Ustrive uh, MFG Ustrive Manufacturing dot com if you want to learn a little bit more about what they're doing. Uh, you can take a look there. Scott, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Allen. We'll be back very soon 